In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a KPI card which will like this in Power BI. So as you can see, we have sales and profit KPIs. Now the question is why you should use this KPI instead of the normal KPI. In the normal KPI, you can show only the sales value or you can show the increase and decrease for month over month or year over year. But here we are showing the breakdown of this sales for 2024 to different months. And it is also showing which month is having the highest and the lowest sales. Let me show you how you can quickly create this visual in Power BI. So we have this canvas where we have this year slicer. And if you see, we have a single measure that is sales, which is just the sum of sales. So let's first create a column chart. We can take either stacked or clustered column chart. That doesn't matter. Next, let's add the sales value in the y-axis and this month in the x-axis. Next step would be to do some formatting. So for that, let's go to this format pane and go to the size and style. We can add padding to the four sides as 20 pixels. So 20, 20, 20, and 20. Next background, let's keep it as it. Next, let's enable the visual border and choose the color as this gray, 20% darker. Rounded corners we can enable and choose. So if you click here, you can turn off this title, turn off this value from the y-axis and similarly let's turn off the value from the x-axis so now we have this uh, sales by month bar chart now instead of showing this x-axis like this showing the full month name we can show the first initial for that i have created the column so we can use this month letter column so here uh, we have used this unicare uh, different unicare values because these unicare values are different invisible characters since the J is repeating multiple times, like three times, and M is repeating two times, and A is repeating. So for that repeating characters, we can add a uh, invisible character. So it will give uh, uniqueness to that J or M. So we have created it like this, and we can sort it by the month number. So in the X axis, let's use that month letter. So it will be like this. If we want to show the sales and the year over year increase uh, up here. For that, we can make use of the title section. So in this title section, or in this title text, we can add the sales value. And in the subtitle, we can add the YOY value. For that, we can create a sales text measure. So uh, click on new measure. And we can say sales text. This would be format the sales measure. And we can format it like this. Hash, comma, hash, hash, hash. Close the bracket. We can add a dollar sign here as well and we can close the bracket so now the format is text now we can use it here in the title so let's choose the format style as field value and here we can say the sales text and click on ok so we have this value now change the font to sejo ui semi bold and the size can be 30. so this is what we want in the horizontal alignment we can make it as right yeah this is better now for the subtitle we'll have to create a measure for year over year increase for that let's click on new measure and let's say YOY sales. So let's create a variable for the current year sales. That will be just the sales measure. Next, let's create a variable for previous year. And this will be calculate the sale measure and date add. In the date, we can use this date column. Number of intervals minus one. Year, close the bracket, close the bracket. So this will calculate the previous year. Now we want to show the change so let's say this change and this will just be the cy minus py so this will give a number and we can add a formatting here so that it should be similar to the sales text so for that we can say it as the change we can make it as a hash 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 a semicolon again write this hash 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 close the bracket now this will give us the normal format in this uh, to add a dollar sign we can add a dollar uh, to both so what this semicolon does is if the value is greater than zero it will take this formatting if the value is less than zero it will take this formatting so uh, i can add if the value is greater than zero i can also add a plus symbol and here if the value is less than zero i can add a minus symbol so this is how we can format next we can uh, calculate the percentage change maybe percentage and this will be just divide cy minus py divided by previous year we can add a formatting to this percentage as well 
So let's say format and uh, we can use the same format function percentage and we can show it as 0.0 percentage. And the purpose to use this format is we don't want the plus and minus symbol in the percentages. So generally, if the value is negative, it will automatically show the negative symbol. So I don't want that negative symbol or even positive sim plus symbol. Since we are going to use the upward and downward arrow icon. Next, let's say condition maybe. Condition. And this condition will be if the percentage is greater than zero. In that case, we are going to use Unicap 129029. So this is basically the upward arrow icon. We can concatenate it with the ampersand. And let's see uh, how we have done. We have this arrow icon and then we have this percentage change. So for that, to add the percentage change, we can add this format. So let's add this format and again add ampersand. And next we can add this bracket and we can add the change from the previous year. For that, we can uh, say um, this. We can concatenate this open bracket and in the open bracket we can uh, again close this and add ampersand because we want to show the change maybe so this change we can add here and again ampersand concatenate and the rest of the things like from previous year now close the bracket and close the inverted comma so the same thing uh, we can copy down to the next line so with that we can use a shift alt down so it will copy it and here uh, instead of upward arrow we can add the downward arrow icon for that the, the we can use 3 1 the rest everything would be same let's close the bracket and let's return this condition so this is our yy sales let's put it here and see how it shows so turn on the subtitle and here click on fx field value and yy let's click on ok so it's showing something like this and uh, so it's added and the alignment of this should be to the right and uh, we can uh, change the color of it based on the increase and decrease so for that we can create a cf measure let's copy this measure till here we can use it to create a cf conditional me formatting measure and we can say cf yy sales we have, we have cy py and the percentage change we don't need this change next we can return switch true then we can say if the percentage is greater than zero in that case let's return green if it is less than zero let's return red and uh, else we can return gray close the bracket so we can use this uh, in the text color so click on fx and choose the field value and choose your the cs yy sales click on ok so this is now giving the green color because it's 10.9 percent increase next we have to change the color of these bars and also show the maximum sales month and the minimum sales month and for that let's create a measure again and we can say it as cf bars uh, let's first create a variable for the max value and for this max value we will use this max x function and in the table it takes table and expression create a table by using the summarize and inside this table, we'll use all selected date table. And we are going to summarize by the month number. So use this month number and let's say sales. And the expression for the sales will be in the same sales measure. Let's close the bracket. So this is the table we are going to use. So if we have just calculated the maximum value, it would have given the maximum sales value for the daily sales. But we need here the maximum sales value for a particular month. So for that, I've grouped the sales on month number. So that now if I calculate the sales, now it will give the maximum sales for a particular month. Similarly, we can create a minimum minimum sales measure, minimum sales variable. So for that here we can say min value and here we can say min min x. Next, we can write a condition or we can just return. If we can return switch to and we can say if the max value is equals to the sales value in that case let's show the green color bars if it is equal to the min value let's show the red color bars else let's show the light gray color bars close the bracket now let's use this cf bars here so for that let's go to the column section and in the column section we can 
use this color section, click on FX and here let's choose the field value and here let's choose CS bars. Click on OK. Now it's showing the maximum month and the minimum month sales and the rest of the bars as light gray color. This is looking good. Next we can add a shape from here. Let's choose this rectangle shape and let's format this. Go to this shape and style and turn off the fill, turn off the border, enable the text and we can write sales. Here we can make it as 15, semi bold and here we can use the font as this dark gray. Also we can make the alignment as the left. Now we can adjust this text here and align it from the bars and the KPIs. Next we can group these two to one. So select it like this and we can say control plus G and it will be grouped. So this is how we can create the measure. Suppose in case you don't want to use the extra shapes, what you can do is you can uh, not use it and we can add the, you can use, you can make use of the X axis title and here we can say sales and uh, the only drawback that I see here is the sales text is smaller compared to the other one and you have to make the chart a little bigger then only it will be visible so as per me the shape one would work better so that you can create a visual like this i hope you learned something new from this video and i found this video useful if you need my help and want to connect one-on-one -on -one with me you can book a call on topmate and if you want to buy power bi reports along with data set and brd document you can check out the products i have here i have provided the links in the description see you there these are the books that I highly recommend buying that can take your Power BI skills to the next level. These three books can cover almost all the aspects of Power BI from DAX to Power Query to the overall Power BI dashboarding. You can find the link of these books in the description. Check them out if you want to level up faster.